And welcome to Video Game Hangover. I'm Randy Dickinson, and I'm in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Hey, I'm DJ Ross. I am in Mountain View, California. Each week here on Video Game Hangover, we talk about the games that have been keeping us up at night. On this week's show, that list includes Haven Park and Fantasian. Mm. Final Fantasian. Oh, you're close. Fant- <laughs> Closer than you think. <laughs> Phantomerican. Phantom. Oh, Fanta. <laughs> Wanta. Wanta. Fanta. Wanta. Fanta. So, yay, video games. I will also confess here at the top that I've played no insignificant amount of the new Angry Birds game this week. What? Just... Is this the first time we talked about Angry Birds on here? This is the first time that has been somebody's game of the week. <laughs> I'm not saying it's my game of the week. I've come to talk about Haven Park, but I will also mention I've played a lot of Angry Birds this week. What is new about this version of Angry Birds? I honestly don't know. I've it's you been so know. long <laughs> since I've played uh, vanilla Angry Birds <laughs> that I don't I'm not quite sure what the the differences are. Do do you, have you played the original Angry Birds? Have you played any incarnation of Angry Birds? I played the original, and here's my experience with Angry Birds. I played it, it was probably like in an Apple store or like a Best Buy or something where it was on one of the demo units. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Angry Birds, it's that game everybody likes. What is this about? And I played it, and I played like a couple levels of it, and I was like, I understand how the entirety of this game works, and (laughs) that was the last time I played it. Yeah, yeah, you got it. It was just Um, one of those games. I mean, it was fun, but... It just falls into that category of so many mobile games where it's like, here's a hundred levels of doing this kind of thing. and One mechanic, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, no judgment. I've played my share of those games. Yeah. Yes, I mean, and there's a reason why this was sort of the biggest video game in the world for a short period of time. Right. Um, um, did you see the so Angry it, Birds movie? I did not see the Angry Birds movie, although I, I, I remember sort of laughing heartily at the commercial for it, so... <laughs> Yeah, no, I didn't see the movie, uh, but the uh, new one, yeah, it's called Angry Birds Journey. Uh, you can, the birds have different abilities now. I don't remember if that was a thing in the original one, but like, there was a there's a black bird that you can fling at the, you put it in a little slingshot and you th- shoot it at a tower <laughs> full of things that have pigs okay. in it for some reason. Yeah, yeah, and um, the more black enemy one of a uh, of birds. Of birds, of course, yeah. And the black one is a bomb, so it hits something and it just explodes immediately. There's one that you shoot that's a little pink one, and it it creates a giant bubble, and it collects everything in that bubble, and then shoots the bubble in the air, and where it lands, it'll knock down more stuff. Um, I and feel then like that's a... been a thing. I mean, maybe not Has that, that one specifically, thing? but okay. haven't they always had different colored ones? It was like the little yellow triangle ones. Okay, maybe, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm not an Angry Birds authority by any means. Yeah, but what's the no, journey no. aspect of it? I don't Is it know. An RPG this time? I don't know. That's kind of what I was expecting. I'm like, oh, maybe there's like a story mode and character progression or something, but there's none of that to be found. It is I, really you just put a bird in the slingshot and, th- <laughs> and and hope it knocks down the things that you're trying to <laughs> knock down, which for a period of time is engaging. Um, but after a while, like you said, it just sort of feels like uh, you're kind of doing the same thing over and over. And because it is a game that, you know, they would very much like you to put sort of real world money into, um, mm. uh, the, the odds become increasingly stacked against you. You get further and further into the thing. Um, they're... Yeah, the developers are Rovio, I think, is the developer uh, still on these things. Is content to give away the first, you know, handful of levels, quite a few levels, in fact, uh, for free. But uh, once you start sort of like, oh, you've got eight birds to take down this massive tower made of stainless steel and concrete, um, it does feel like sort of the odds are stacked against you. And and oh, geez, <laughs> you know, if you want to pay a dollar right now, we'll give you eight more shots and ten more birds. Oh, there you go. Uh, That's how they yeah. get you. That's how they get you. Um, so I, I'm I'm happy to say that I've not put any money into the thing, but I'm at a point where uh, if I want to be able to progress without any sort of significant frustration, I'm going to have to start putting real money into it. 
I played a couple games like that um, a year or so ago, uh, which felt like, yeah, at a certain point, it just becomes impossible or just very luck based whether or not you're able to complete the next level. Right. right. And that was very frustrating because I was like, well, I feel dirty paying to like for progress <laughs> like i'll you know any game that's just free to download i'll i'm totally fine with sending them a few dollars for their like starter kit or whatever because i'm like you know people worked on this game yeah take some <laughs> take some money you deserve it but when it gets to the point where you like pay us some gems to recover your stamina to complete this level or buy some boost so this level is not completely impossible I just feel like that's it's not great game design at that point. Yeah, right. It's just... Uh, yeah, and you know, it's fairly common in mobile games, so it's not surprising when that happens. I'm not offended by, by, right, by that. It's right. just, uh, um, I, you know, I, I know that this is a product designed to create income, uh, as, as most video games are for most developers. But uh, yeah, when it starts to feel sort of blatant like that, like there's no ability to succeed with sort of the basic skill set of this thing, then it's not really uh, um, fun for me anymore. Yeah. I was able to sort of like stave off uh, like either paying for like boosts or just dropping the game entirely by telling myself like, oh, it's like when you play solitaire on the computer, you don't go into that expecting to just win every single game. Sometimes you just don't get the the cards in the order right. you need. Right. So I was like, sometimes you just can't finish the level and that's fine because other games are like that. And that worked for a while. But, but if imagine yeah. at the at the end of a game of solitaire, if you could like you know put in a dollar and get yeah. a, get where, a where reshuffle is that and three yeah. of spades that's you know should be at the bottom of my pile. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so the, the base mechanic of the thing of of flinging little birds at towers of piggies and knocking it down still kind of fun, still pretty entertaining. Yeah, it's still um, pretty good. But uh, um, clearly designed to be, uh, uh, you know, a, a pretty blatant kind of income machine for Rovio in the later levels. And uh, like you said, yeah, sure. Listen, I've played 100 levels of this thing. I'll give you a couple bucks for that time. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to continue to drop, you know, hundreds of dollars into Angry Birds Journey when there's other things that could be occupying my time. <laughs> uh, can you gotcha for more powerful birds that will help you out? Uh, I have not found a mechanic like that yet. I uh, and, and again, the gotcha games are so much kind of baked into mobile gaming at this point. I, I half expected that to be the case, but uh, <laughs> there does not appear to be a, a, a mechanic to do that to, <laughs> to do a little little slot machine action to try to get me another bird. Mm. That's too bad you picked this up recently. I assume because it probably means you missed their summer summoning event where you could get all the angry birds and like revealing <laughs> swimsuits and all that stuff. <laughs> With their Marvel Universe crossover event where I can get the Thor angry bird or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> is that a yep. real thing? That sounds like no, it might I, be real. I, it should, right, that was a pretty convincing lie, right? But no, that I don't believe that's a real <laughs> thing. I made that up. Hmm, well, probably thinking of Fortnite. <laughs> or any number of video games yeah um so yeah kind of engaging kind of fun but definitely sort of hit a brick wall uh, most recently and i'm probably done with it hmm. i just want to point out that we've talked about this before how similar the uh the actual like mechanics of angry birds are to uh just a golf game on a phone so conceptually you have talked about a uh, golf game once again Nothing but golf for uh, most of 2021. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah. No, I mean, it's fine. I'm just pointing out that <laughs> the, the number of golf games you end up playing on your phone. <laughs> or on the Switch or wherever. Uh, it's true. It is more or less uh, identical in, in mechanics the, to uh, Golf Club Wasteland, which I've talked about last week. Um, so, yeah. Good times. Well, excellent. Maybe I will check it out. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, worth a download. And then a quick deletion. I feel like, you know, once every 10 years, I don't know when that first Angry Birds game came out, but I feel like it's been long enough that maybe I'll, I should give another look. Maybe I'll find something that I've been just missing. Maybe it's another golf game. Maybe that's it. Yeah. You, didn't, you could do worse than just sort of kind of mindless entertainment for a little while, right? Right, right. Yeah. Um, Sarah had the Angry Birds Star Wars 
Oh, <laughs> the little maybe, Star Wars maybe crossover. I should be looking into this. That's the one. She had it on her 3DS, and I think had just a ton of hours on it. Played it constantly. Um, and that was not a you know pay to win kind of scenario. That was you know buy the cartridge, have the whole game. Um, and uh, she was able to sort of milk a ton of goofy Star Wars flavored fun out of that. So um, you know. Again, that base mechanic of, of <laughs> flinging a thing at a wall and watching the wall fall over uh, can be entertaining if done well. Yeah. No, that's good. They're good games. Yeah. I'll hold out for the Star Trek crossover. Right. <laughs> Just a weird, like, Patrick Stewart head with feathers. <laughs> you get to launch it at a wall. <laughs> Data's the little robot bird. Oh, yeah. See, I might be into that. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> It makes a little, like, photon torpedo sound whenever you launch yeah. one. That'd be terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Two to the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, good times. Anyway, other games. We've played some other games, I'm sure. Other games, yeah. Speaking of mobile games, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm Where finally we... ready to talk about Fantasian yeah. uh, this week. I finally had a hard ready. time getting into this game. Finally ready. Okay. Yeah, I've been, well, so I've been, like kind of whittling away at the opening couple of hours for the last two months probably no oh, okay it's just i mean this is one issue i have with this game i'm just to get it out there i'm enjoying this game but it's not the easiest game to play hmm. uh, <laughs> so first of all I feel like uh, every review on video game hangover is i'm enjoying this game but but yes i yeah. mean for the most part i, I feel like it's not usually a but, but uh, in, in this case, I mean, it's just. I'm enjoying this situation. game unconditionally. Yeah. Podcast yeah. over. <laughs> so, ahead, sorry, I, mean, I apologize. A little bit about the game. Uh, this is the new game from Mistwalker Studio, which is uh, which was founded by Hironobu Sakaguchi, the father of Final Fantasy, oh. and you know, ex SquareSoft employee. It's been a while since he made a game like this. And uh, just to make it even more special, doing the soundtrack is none other than Nobu Uematsu, the legendary Final Fantasy composer, who, you know, he did the soundtracks for most of those games. Yeah. So it's sort of like this amazing reunion between these just two, like, legendary industry figures. Hmm. Have they not continued to work together throughout the rest of their career, or is it just kind of a one-off? They did a few games together, okay. but... Their output is not quite what it used to be back in the, you know, Final Fantasy's heyday. Gotcha. Um, so it's exciting that this game came out, uh, or that they are just collaborating on something again. They've said, though, that, uh, well, Sakaguchi has said this anyway, I don't know about Uematsu, uh, that, you know, he's he's getting up there. He's had a long and very uh, illustrious career. He said in interviews that this may end up being, like, his last game. Oh. Which is like, oh, man, that's a little... A little sad, but, you know, good for you, knowing, <laughs> just like, don't work yourself to death, please. And then Uematsu, I mean, he's actually been in uh, the news recently as, as having some, like, health issues. He had to step away from work for a while. But he's back to do this thing, to do this soundtrack, and, and I don't think he's been as explicit about saying it as Sakaguchi, but I, I feel like, you know, like, I don't know how many more soundtracks that... Uh, we can expect from this guy like he he should be able to enjoy his retirement as well yeah absolutely we're focused on his health yeah so anyways i mean it kind of puts this thing in a new light considering the you know just the the backstory behind these guys so not sure where where to go next with whether i should get into the actual game or just explain why i've had trouble getting into this it is um it sounds just based on sort of the the, pa- the the packaging here that this would be an automatic sell to you. This would be a thing that you would be into, yeah, kind of almost unconditionally. Yeah, I mean, like okay, so just to describe the game, it uh, as you might expect, it is a JRPG ass JRPG <laughs> where you walk around dungeons until you run into a monster and then you <laughs> you fight a turn based battle with your characters on one side of the screen and monsters on the other side. Sound I'm shocked familiar. by this. It's, yeah. it's, it's, I, if you had uh, said it was a first-person military shooter, I think I'd I'd be on the floor. But uh, yeah. that sounds about right. Yeah. That sounds on brand. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's totally fine because this is like that's the game you want these guys to make. So that's right. great. Yeah. 
the reason I've had issues playing it is because it is an Apple Arcade exclusive, and I have a tiny phone. <laughs> so it's also just like the rhythm of playing a game like this is so different than any other game that I have on my phone. In the past, I've been able to play some JRPGs on my phone. I played Dragon Quest 1 and 2, which were fine, but those are also just very brisk uh, com- compared to this, I feel like. Mm-hmm. I also just don't really care for the touch controls in it. I mean, they're they're fine, but they're just not as engaging as playing a, a game like this with a controller. To the extent where I actually... Um, so I, I went through all the trouble of pairing a controller to my phone and playing it that way, and then it just leads to other weird considerations because then you have to put the phone down on something. And <laughs> with, with the phone I have, it's essentially like... I don't know how often you've played the Switch in tabletop mode, uh, once, like once. day of release, like oh yeah. look, you can just, do this just to try it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And never again since then. I don't know how your experience was, but it is the worst. It, <laughs> it's so bad because I mean, it's nothing like wrong with the switch or playing a game that way, but you end up just having it on the table, and it's so far from you at that point. You have to like hunch over it weirdly, or you can't read anything on the screen, or really like see anything that's going on. Ugh. So imagine that, but it's like on my phone, which is even smaller than the Switch. So it's just not a great experience playing this with a controller uh, with mm-hmm. my setup. I have um, uh, similar issues with playing games on the Switch Lite even. I think that well, you that can't you see just the... hold in your hands. You hit, right, but I still, for the life of me, cannot see the, the writing in, I would say, 50% <laughs> of the Switch Lite games. Oh, um, wow. And then I go into the uh, settings, and there's no adjustment. There's no way to sort of, like, scale up the size of the text. Um, so I'm like, is this an old guy problem? Is this an everybody problem? Um, I think, I mean, in your defense, I, I don't think it's, like, a, it's a problem with you. I think there are a lot of people making games that, like, for the Switch specifically, or maybe there are ports from other platforms, that, you know, they're expecting it to be played on a TV. Right. Although that's yeah. not even a great excuse because sometimes you play them on a TV and you still can't read the text. <laughs> I've had less of that problem. Generally, when I put something on my giant TV, I can read it. But hmm. um, I was playing uh, Haven Park, which I'm going to talk a little bit about later. And you have a little little notebook you carry around with you. And there's uh, one page of, of writing in the notebook where I'm like, this is either a weird color choice or uh, just a very strange font choice or the text is very, very tiny and I can't make out what it says. <laughs> um, so, you know, I tweak the brightness and I check the settings to see if there's some way to make the, the scale, the, the, the text up and it just cannot be done. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'm just not meant to read what's on that page. Yeah. Well, anyway, but go so ahead. sorry. Yeah. Fantasia, not an ideal platform. I feel like if I had a, like an Apple TV or something or like one of those little harnesses that you put on the controller. So your phone just attaches to it. Yeah. This might be a better proposition. But I can just never get into the the mindset. I can never just psych myself up enough to be like, I'm gonna sit down and just do three hours of Fantasian like <laughs> on the couch holding my phone up or something, or like setting it's... up the controller in a weird way so it's a little more tolerable. <laughs> and squint at the tiny screen on my phone for however long it takes for the battery to die. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. still very small. Which is unfortunate, because when I end up actually getting myself into it, it's pretty good. I mean, it's like it's like a, a Final Fantasy game, essentially. You play as uh, this guy, Leo, who uh, so you start off in the kind of a prologue chapter, which is um, it's not really explained. You don't get a lot of context around this, but it, it is just this very high-tech looking factory in fact, Final Fantasy fans will be overjoyed to know that they call it the Thauma Tech Factory, <laughs> which is just very thin transformation of um, the Magitech Factory from Final Fantasy VI. Oh, interesting. At the very shortly into it, after you've done a few battles, you run into a, like a treasure chest, and inside the treasure chest you find a, a phoenix feather, which is one of the... like like signature items from Final Fantasy. So it's like, okay, I see what's going on with this game. But you you make your way through this factory, you fight a big boss, and at the end of it, like I forget exactly what happens, you're surrounded by enemies. 
and Leo uses this, uh, he has some kind of warp device that he uses to escape uh, and like warp him elsewhere. But in the process, he loses his memory and just becomes another amnesiac JRPG protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> he ends up in like this backwater village and some mysterious girl who could use magic comes to his rescue. And from there on, they set out to figure out what's going on with his memory and I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is like none of this is new, but I'll allow it. It's fine. Let's see where <laughs> they go with this. One of the most distinctive things about this is that it's in 3D, uh, although it's it's kind of that. It's not like it's like that overhead sort of like classic Final Fantasy uh, view as you're navigating around. Mm-hmm. But in a lot of cases, the backgrounds are basically like they photographed dioramas that they've actually built in real life. So it like the backgrounds are, are photographic some of the time. And it's it's kind of a striking effect because you know it doesn't look like typical 3D graphics. It looks like like the characters are 3D, but they're walking around on like a little tabletop. And it looks like somebody just built a little set for them to explore. Cool. Which uh which yeah, like it doesn't look like a lot of other games, and I think that it's clearly not every scene is built this way. Like when you go into the world map, that is clearly not um, a diorama that somebody built. That just looks like some three D, like any other RPG at that point. But in the sections that you can tell it's a diorama, it's a very cool effect, um, and the camera angles will even shift around. Like you'll be walking around a map. And come to a corner and the whole scene will rotate uh, 90 degrees. I'm just like, I don't understand how that works. <laughs> because it's like still this like physical diorama, but they've been able to rotate it somehow. It's probably just some like interesting special effect or yeah. camera trick. But it's it's pretty cool. It's very unusual. Huh. I'm looking at screenshots of it now and it is very striking. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm a little disappointed because it's probably harder to appreciate on my tiny little phone <laughs> but it looks very nice when it does you just work keep thinking, god this would look amazing on a television <laughs> yeah i man i looked into like an apple tv those things are expensive for one game but like just to play this on i don't know if that's a great investment but i kind right. of feel like oh man i i feel like i'm doing it a disservice by playing it on my phone is this why you and I had a, um, a pre-show conversation about you looking for a new iPad? I well, I mean, they just announced the new thing of iPads, <laughs> as luck the, would have it, and mine is quite old. So I was thinking, oh, you know, kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, not just for one game, but you also need a new iPad. I mean, I was just thinking, like, maybe this is the thing that pushes me over because I also like to put off upgrading my tablet. Um, I've actually been waiting specifically for them to announce this uh, revision. I think it's a lot of people have been waiting for them to do this refresh. So it's just like, oh, here it is. And I'm playing Fantasian, so what good timing. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I'm trying to tell myself it would not be just for this game because that's ridiculous. Sure. You have iPad things to do. Sure, yeah. I have a lot of recipes to, to read. <laughs> but anyway... The visuals are very cool, and it's also like hilarious that they ended up just physically building out a bunch of sets for this game because, like, the history of Final Fantasy is so closely associated with like 3D graphics, um, like especially around when Final Fantasy VII came out, uh, and just how much like, sort of wizardry they were accomplishing with uh, like all the pre-rendered SGI backgrounds and everything. So it's hilarious that they've gone from that. And just Square Enix making a name for themselves as this graphical powerhouse to just building little sets for the characters to walk around that they then scan into the game somehow. But it looks very cool. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Hmm. That's cool. The battles, like I said, they look like your typical Final Fantasy battles where it's just, you know, enemies smacking at you or you, you smacking the enemies back and forth from one side of the screen. Um, what... Like the interesting twist that they put on it is your special attacks, they kind of have like uh, area of effect properties. So the main guy, you have like a line attack. Uh, And if you line it up correctly, if you like target the correct enemy, I guess in this case, you kind of slide the uh, targeting reticle up and down the screen or use an analog stick. You can hit more than one enemy at a time. 
And uh, the thing that the mage girl does is even more interesting because she can kind of like curve her spells around. So you can set up these like little arcs uh, and attempt to hit multiple targets, you know, which is obviously, you know, a good thing to do because it's do more damage that turn. So that's kind of an interesting way it departs from just selecting an enemy and, you know, trading hits back and forth. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. That's really unique. Yeah, I'm waiting. Just, I'm still fairly early on, so I'm I'm wondering, you know, if I get more party members, are they going to have even crazier stuff that they can do with just like spatial attacks and that sort of thing? <laughs> Bullet time. Yeah, I mean, who knows? So as I was saying, you you spend a lot of time walking around dungeons and uh, fighting enemies. You'd <laughs> be pleased to learn that this has random encounters. Although, before you, like, flip out about it, I I have to say, this has one of the most unusual approaches to random encounters that I've ever seen. Go on. And that you are, I mean, you still walk around the map, and occasionally you will just enter a battle, which is like, okay, that's (laughs) that's pretty standard stuff. That's what I would expect from a a random encounter, yep. Yeah. But very early on in the game, uh, this is after the prologue chapter, you, uh, you remember that your little warp device, the thing that Leo's got has this feature called let me find it in my notes it's called dimension which <laughs> is a mashup of it looks like dimension and dungeon oh gotcha <laughs> which is like sure fine and what this does is it lets you it doesn't let you turn random encounters off but it lets you postpone them essentially so you'll you turn on this dimension feature and you just continue going about your business you're like going you're making your way through this dungeon and then every time you would have had a random encounter, the screen flashes and it's like three enemies were absorbed into the dimension and this little <laughs> g- counter starts filling up in the corner of the screen. And the idea is that, you know, you didn't have to fight that battle, but those enemies that you would have had to fight are now stored in your little device. And the catch is it can only store a maximum of 30 enemies in there at a time. And if it gets to that point, it'll just explode or whatever. They need to fight them all at once. Oh. So, so you can continue just you know exploring around and trying to get to the next plot objective or whatever as this dimension meter fills up. But eventually, you either have to manually go into that thing and, and fight all the stored enemies that you've been saving up to that point, or wait till it fills up to 30 and then you have to do all of them at once. So you don't really have a choice about it. Hmm. Uh, which is like, okay, that's... That's interesting because yeah, sometimes I just don't want to fight enemies at that exact moment. Right. So you can I'm on a mission. I'm trying the... to get to a place and do a thing. Yeah. 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 I want to know what happens next, and so you can kind of just like turn them off, but with the you know the caveat that you know you're gonna have to fight them sooner or later. Right. <laughs> right. That's um, that's pretty unique. I think I could tolerate that. Yeah, it's I mean, interesting. The, the execution would sort of dictate it, obviously, but uh, that sounds like a, a, an interesting kind of workaround. Yeah, well, so here's here's how it ends up working out. Uh, so I was, like, enjoying this thing, and it's it's kind of funny just walking around now and be, be like, why is the screen flashing? Oh, it's because <laughs> <laughs> the dimension just absorbed more enemies. Uh, so I thought, okay, I, I, I want to check this out before it gets up to 30, in case that is just a disaster. Because the battles, they're not super difficult. I mean, they're they're on the easy side, I guess. But, you know, I don't know what it's going to be like fighting 30 enemies at once. You're going to 30 like of them at once, exactly, yeah. Yeah. So the first time trying this thing out, I think I, I waited until it was like, like 15. So, like, it's a lot of enemies to have in one battle. But it's not 30, so we're going to see how it goes. And plus, I made sure all my, my characters were like fully healed. They had all their magic finds at that point. Can I ask, do you do all 15 of them in succession, or do you fight all 15 at once? Well, here's the thing. So I I activated the dimension, and we get sent off to this little like matrix world. <laughs> and there were probably there were probably like seven or eight on the field at once. So not all of, all of them show up at the same time. Gotcha. So I was like, okay, that's a relief. That probably makes the 30 a much better proposition than uh, if it had just been like you surrounded by 30 enemies. <laughs> but then if you remember back to, you know, all the attacks that can hit multiple enemies at once, the fact that the play field just has so many more enemies on it now means you can like really get a lot of like a lot better use out of these attacks. In fact, doing that, uh, the magic attack where she like curves the like, 
I don't know what it is, like a magic bullet through the enemies mm. is so cool when you can hit like four or five at once. Uh, oh. Compared to like in the normal battles, there are only like two or three enemies in a typical battle. So it's tough to hit like even two sometimes. It's kind but of fun. In, in this one, you're just like, oh, yeah, these guys are all lined up. Look at these suckers. Or, <laughs> you know, these guys are kind of on a curve. Let me see if I can do that one. Plus, I think this is unique to the Dimension fights, but it'll drop a bunch of power-ups on the field. And if you hit one of those, it will have some bonus effect, like you'll get a, an attack boost, or sometimes you can take an extra turn afterward. So that's just another uh, kind of twist to it where, you know, you want to be hitting these enemies. But, ooh, if I can pick up a couple of these little bonuses at the same time, that would be great. Right. Um, and it's in some way... It's actually like better than just fighting the individual battles as you're walking around because, you know, you get into a random encounter, you used to have to spend a couple turns whacking away at like three enemies. But if you save them all up in this little thing and and do them all at once, it's so much more efficient, it feels like, because you can like take out a whole row of them at once and then earn yourself an extra turn and just do that again, like two times in a row. It's really good. Yeah. Well, cool. I don't know if I'm there into are... this. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, I don't know if there's more to it <laughs> that unlocks later on. It seems like there's a lot of potential to just make a bunch of weird decisions with it. But like I said, very unusual approach to random battles. Mm. I, I don't know if anybody has completely solved that. I don't know if it's just, you know, if having enemies on the map is the perfect solution. But this one is, uh, you know, definitely thinking outside the box. Yeah. Yeah, the enemies visible on the map thing, obviously, to me, is preferable because, mm -hmm. like you said, in circumstances where you're kind of, I'm trying to get to a thing, I'm trying to deliver a, uh, you know, a package or, or get to the next story beat, I, the last thing I want to do is like, oh, another slime encounter. Um, <laughs> so I like being able to, in those moments, be able to kind of avoid those on the field. Or, like in Dragon Quest Eleven, I think you could just, riding your horse, just barrel Yeah, through. just mow them down <laughs> with the horse. Right, and you, you get a little XP for that, for your trouble. Um, and then, you know, later in the game, if you're trying to... Uh, um, pull together some uh, some XP, some grinding, uh, you're, you can then head out into the overworld and deal with those guys one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I just, I, I like having the option. I don't like the option. Uh, I don't like sort of the, the lack of uh, being able to sort of control my uh, uh, agency in moving the story forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm only really irritated by random battles when they feel like a waste of time to me. Like, I feel like Dragon Quest has always been fairly good about it because the battles... At least when you're fighting stuff in the same like level range as you are, sure, they scale are fairly bit, yeah. interesting. They're like pretty strategic, but you know, if you go back to an old area, uh, and I ran into this a lot most recently in uh, Yakuza Seven, weirdly enough, you just have to you know, like like the whole process of getting into a battle, and then there's just like one enemy that you know is like just gonna fall over immediately <laughs> if you like <laughs> breathe on them. You just wasted six minutes of my life on this stupid encounter yeah it's just yeah. like an irritation yeah 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 because i was not great for that yeah but you know what if ichiban had a magic box that he could just send enemies into like <laughs> the phantom zone and then deal with them 10 minutes from now that would be yeah. pretty good I mean, there was a little bit of that. There was sort of like the um, the battle tower thing in uh, in Yakuza, where you basically just rode an elevator a floor after floor, and they basically yeah. sent you kind of wave after wave after wave of all of the uh, uh, enemies that basically you were dealing with on the on the street level. Um, what was that called? The battle arena. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, that was not sort of an option in the game to like, I'm going to postpone this battle. I'll, I'll fight you later. And the, it just, it was just recycling stuff that you had done before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm explaining to you, like, you don't know what I'm talking about. I know you played the <laughs> game, DJ. I, I'm um, still just so impressed. I hadn't heard that you made it to the battle arena. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Quite a bit of that. Excellent. I, I think that's where I fizzled. Unfortunately, I don't know that I got much farther than that. I was still trying to sort of beat my head against the wall in the arena. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> certainly unless you do that for a, for quite a long time if you really want it to. It does, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so Dimension, very good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty good game. Like I said, when I can get myself to just sit down and play it, it's really good. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, it's just the, the manner in which you have to play it is not preferable, obviously. 
Yeah, it's not great. And I feel like that is, I mean, it's not just for me, but the fact that this is an Apple Arcade exclusive really bums me out. I'm not sure if there are plans to put it on other platforms eventually. It's only been out for a few months. I kind of want to play it now. Yeah, I mean, I think people would enjoy it. Uh, Who knows where it ends up if it ends up being like, you know, Final Fantasy level um, at some point. But I, at this point, it just seems like it's not getting to uh, a wide audience. Because I don't, I don't even. I, I'm the only person I know who plays Apple Arcade games, and I barely play them. So, I don't know if that says anything. <laughs> so, with the Apple Arcade, for the sake of our listeners who maybe who are Android people or just haven't dipped into this, it's meant to be this kind of like curation system in the arcade, right? Where they sort of take a handful of games that they. Uh, approve vet in some way and mm-hmm. and put into a collection that makes it easier for you as a consumer to sort of find good games right right yes. and you know not trying to sound like an ad for apple arcade or anything but it's actually like pretty great because i think it's it's like five dollars a month that's cheap <laughs> and there are so many games on there at this point and like you said they're they're curated so like most of them are pretty good and um, one of the other sort of tenets of it is that, like, you get download a game on there, and that's the entire thing. You don't have to download add-ons. You don't have to pay to refill energy, at least in none of the games I've played. I mean, you don't have to pay for anything extra. I don't know if any of the games have an energy meter in them. But it's sort of like you just get the whole thing, and it's on your right. phone as long as you keep that subscription active. There is a, a sort of a, a good equivalent thing in Android as well, but I've never dipped into it. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, I'm bored. what was my point? <laughs> I don't know what my point was. Oh, so <laughs> if if you don't have an, a subscription to Apple Arcade, can you buy this game a la carte from iTunes? No, or I, I iOS, don't believe the so. iOS store. No, yeah. so you have to have Arcade to have access to this exclusive game. You do. Yeah, got it. Okay. There are some games that are available like separately. Like you don't need a subscription. That is not the case with every game, and I don't Got think it. it is with this one. Okay, so they're kind of walling them off behind the subscription. That's yeah. interesting because yeah. like, it would be like if they're. Geez, I really wanted to play Psychonauts too, but you have to have a uh, Game Pass subscription. Yeah, if it was it. only on Game Pass. Yeah, which I don't think I, I don't think that's a thing at all, right? No, I've never heard of that existing on Xbox. That's mm-hmm. uh, that might just be an Apple thing. Yeah, I feel like it is because like clearly they have some sort of deal worked out with Mr. Walker uh, to get this thing on there. Hmm. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it comes to other stuff eventually. Uh, I really a few of the does. things in the arcade have proven to be kind of limited time only kind of exclusives. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I forgot how long like Alba was one of those. Um, yeah, that was exclusive for I think less than a year. Yep. And Sayonara Wild Hearts launched uh, uh, as an arcade exclusive and then eventually came to everything else. Was it really that I? I don't think that was exclusive for as long as uh, Alba, though. Was it? No, it was much quicker. A couple months, maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, this only came out I think like a few months ago, so not that long. Um, mm-hmm. They released. Um, it's weird. They released like part one, and then uh, I think in August they released part two, and <laughs> I'm still on part one, so I don't know what the implications are. <laughs> but. Uh, Bottom line is, uh, it has not been out for too long, so I think there's still definitely hope that it will come to other stuff. Cool. And how many more parts to come? Are they transparent about that? Uh, I think two is the end. So oh, okay. it's all out there. Hmm. And I think I've seen something about there's like in-game content, but uh, I'm still quite a ways off from that, so not prepared to, to explain what that's about yet. <laughs> so is it... Um... XP driven? Like, is it, is does the dimension thing does putting off fighting those enemies until later um, uh, hit your XP? Like, if you need XP now, if you're trying to sort of grind, are you better off taking those combat uh, opportunities kind of one at a time, or, or what? I don't know if it gives you a bonus or anything for doing it, but you, you certainly do get a lot more XP if I mean because you just kill a bunch of enemies at once as opposed to doing it over half an hour or so. Right. Okay. So yeah, I'm not sure if there's like extra strategy involved, but I do think it like it is much more satisfying to deal with a whole pack of them at once, and it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't bog down the exploration just having to take a break and and fight two or three enemies at a time. Hmm. Yeah, you you can have ten XP now, or you can have a hundred later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who needs the ten XP now? Because you're not it fighting enemies right now. Depends on how badly right you need ten XP right now. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Anyway, so I'm I'm pretty happy with it so far. Hmm. Um, soundtrack's also very good. There's some very uh, it it feels very much like a, an Uematsu soundtrack, uh, very familiar. So uh, fans will be pleased. Um, um, but yeah, but otherwise I, not connected in any uh, um, named way to Final Fantasy. This isn't like a secret Final Fantasy game or something. Oh no, no, no. it's just uh, you know some thematic connection, very as you said, evocative of one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hmm. <laughs> this is from the same guy who uh, he made that Wii game, The Last Story. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> he uh, he hmm. definitely has his uh, his wheelhouse that he he's comfortable in. Sure. Well, it certainly pays the bills, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, interesting. I'm kind of intrigued by this. I mean, it's gorgeous to look at. I'm just looking at screenshots and little gifs of it and stuff, and it's just beautiful. That alone is not enough to carry a game, but uh, what you're describing sounds interesting. Yeah, I, I really feel like, oh, man, should I like wait, wait until I have a bigger screen to play this on? Should I just wait <laughs> till it comes out on like Switch or PS4 or something in the future, if, if that ever happens? I don't know. I wonder if I'm just like stifling the experience playing it on my phone. So what I'm afraid of, but uh, I don't know. We'll we'll see how the next few hours treat me. <laughs> cool. Well, um, I've been playing uh, uh, Haven Park. Um, this is not in any way a Final Fantasy game either. Are you uh, sure? <laughs> I'm positive. Um, it it's almost a sequel to uh, uh, a short hike, though. Uh, not it in does any look very similar to a short yeah. hike it's like visually it plays very similarly to a short hike as well so um I, I won't necessarily describe what a short hike is to our listeners hopefully you know by now if not check it out it's a very good game um yeah. Yeah. this is um <clears throat> called haven park it's not the same developers as a short hike uh, although on their website they do say it is inspired by a short hike um it's it's it's, it's inspired by games like a short hike and animal crossing so you know I had to play it, obviously. <laughs> um, and uh, um, the hook here is that you have um, uh, like a state park. It's a big park, uh, kind of on an island, surrounded by water on all sides, um, that your grandma used to be the um, sort of the groundskeeper of. Um, she still lives there in a house, uh, and the game starts with you having a little conversation with your gram. Um, you're a little critter. You're a little duck, and your gram is an older duck. This is like, okay, I'm sorry. This is exactly a short hike. <laughs> and uh, your grab says to you, hey, uh, it's your turn now. You're ready. Uh, you're the groundskeeper. Um, so from there, you just go. You you wander the grounds of this massive uh, park um, and find that uh, maybe your grandma's been kind of phoning it in for a while because the park <laughs> is in quite a, quite a state. It's in a bit of a, a, a level of disrepair. Um, you <laughs> have to fix street lights and put up little tiki torches and the campsites are a disaster you find little campsites in all the different areas and you know they have a little circle of stones where there should be a campfire but there's no fire lit um there's places where there could be teepees or little cabins you don't want to have the fire lit if nobody's there (laughs) um Uh, Yeah, so you collect resources, you go out and you explore, you find, um, you know, little canyon pathways and uh, little trails that lead up a a top of mountains and down to little riverbeds. And because you're a little duck, you can swim all over, so you're not afraid of water. Um, And when you find cool uh, little islands that have a bunch of resources on them, you collect up all those things and you go back to the campsite, you build a fire and you build a, um, you can build a tent or a teepee or a little cabana depending on how much resources you have. You can put a bunch of little umbrellas on the beach. Um, and as sort of the quality of the campsites improve, people start to camp there. Little yeah. little other animals, little dogs and cats. And I don't know. I forget what other ones were. I think I've seen a lot of dogs and cats. <laughs> I think there might have been a little bear. Oh. Um but they come and they hang out and they uh, they swim in the water and they <laughs> lay in the sun under the uh, umbrellas. Uh, um, they'll sleep in the teepee at night uh, and um, uh, sit by the fire. Uh, and they will occasionally tell you little stories about, hey, I used to come to this park when I was a kid. It was always so beautiful, um, but I haven't been here in a long time. I heard there's a legend of a, a mysterious tower uh, somewhere in the park. Cool. And if you can find it and climb to the top, there's a... There's something there. There's a mystery to be solved. Um, and every <laughs> now and cell then. cell phone reception. Right? <laughs> Which then it totally turns into a short hike. Um, 
Uh, right. But um, uh, so you, you get a little checklist and here's the screen I'm trying to sort of decipher because the text is so damn small yeah. um, of all these little little story threads, little things around the island, things in the park that you can kind of fix or find or little mysteries to solve. You'll find a, um, a, a book or a note on the ground addressed to somebody named Mr. Bird. And you're like, who's Mr. Bird? So you put it in your pocket and it puts it on your list and it says, find Mr. Bird and deliver the missing letter. So the, the game drops these tiny little sort of like you know environmental kind of challenges almost these little sort of like incidental things that sort of pop up i heard a rumor about a mysterious cave somewhere so on the checklist it'll be like find yeah. mysterious cave um and you could do all of that or you could do none of it you could just wander around and try to like collect resources and open up all the campsites again and stuff um there's no fail states you can't ever break it you can't Ever, like fail out of it uh you don't ever die uh, they never shut down the park for uh you know negligence or danger to pay, uh, uh, campers or anything like that um there's no high stakes like that uh, uh it's really just you sort of exploring 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 and trying to sort of uh, bring a little bit of of life back to this otherwise beautiful park that sounds fun yeah. i am like weirdly excited at the prospect of there just being like things to fix there <laughs> it's super know exciting it yeah um Yes, it's not. <laughs> you don't start the game. Let's, just, let's go to Alba. Uh, um, uh, what's the subtitle of that? A Wildlife Tale? Is that what the game was called? Um, I think it was had, Vengeance. <laughs> had, a, had a similar hook in that you were vacationing with your grandparents and the island had been sort of neglected. So you went around, you cleaned up trash and you fixed bridges. And, and yeah. while you were there, you were sort of taking pictures of wildlife and stuff like that. Um, That's what I was thinking of where I was like, oh. I, you know, I like coming across, um, what is it you find in that game? It was like bird feeders or something. And we're like, oh, this is yeah. messed up. Let me just, you know, click on this. Oh, now it's better. Yeah. Um, it's similar in Haven Park in that you'll find sort of a, a streetlight would be broken in disrepair. And if you had two pieces of metal, you could you could fix it. Um, so you have to hunt around and find little caches of, uh, of resources. Or you can find little things that you can recycle. Um, and uh, turn them into metal that you can then use to fix the um, street light. Um, so you, when you start, nothing kind of works. Everything's a little broken. Everything's kind of haggard. Um, there is kind of, you know, <laughs> trash and stuff all over the place. Uh, so as you start cleaning up the island and start repairing some of these lights and stuff like that, it definitely brings uh, life back to the island. It, it improves the overall look of the things. Things are a little bit greener. Things are a little sunnier. Um, uh, um, it starts to get peopled a little bit more by all these little critters that sort of move in and, and camp and swim and have fun. You can bring in uh, um, food trucks and stuff like that. So um, each campsite needs to have a food option. Uh, your little mm. campers will be like, geez, I'm so hungry. I wish there was some place around here to get a, a bite. So you can put up a little barbecue. That's kind of the easiest one to make. Um, but as you get further into the game and have more resources available to you, um, um, you can uh, start calling in food trucks and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And nice. your campers will patronize these things and they'll put coins into them. So every order at the food truck will be two coins. Um, and you can go around to your food trucks later and collect all your coins and use the coins on further upgrades. So it's this whole kind of push and pull of like you bring a little bit of industry to the island you bring people back to the park they start camping they start spending a little bit of money you can upgrade you can put, add new features um you can have a fireworks show at night and stuff like that so there's all kinds of little things you can kind of do that bring life back to the uh um park it never goes so far as to like complete strip mining of the island you don't sort of like bring industry and turn it into a, a, a you know a thriving metropolis it's oh, oh we've gone too far turn back turn back yeah. i mean maybe um, you just haven't gotten the option maybe, unlocked right. yet. maybe that's like the dlc or something like <laughs> i don't know um you start building you know casinos and stuff like that it just gets out of control yeah um, so that's just like what happened that. in alba you're just like oh maybe we do need a hotel here yeah yeah um but uh, uh, no, it's it's it definitely is about sort of the bright side of of you know taking care of the land. The land takes care of you, uh, et cetera. And um, yeah, I like sort of encountering the little mysteries. I like finding things on the ground that I have to sort of then figure out who who does this belong to. Um, I like exploration. I like sort of like trekking through a little canyon and across a river and into a clearing where I find a little farmhouse. I'm like, oh, what does the farmhouse do? Um, so there's little kind of, you know, little mysteries and little people and, and little things to sort of investigate. Nothing heavy. It's not a puzzle game by any stretch. You're not sort of trying to put all these pieces together. It's just uh, um, really kind of deft the way that it handles sort of
sort of m metering out a little sense of discovery and, and uh, just kind of finding cool and interesting new things around every corner. Yeah. I like the idea that it is is basically a short hike. Like if if you're listening and you haven't seen what this game looks like, it looks <laughs> like looks almost identical to a short hike. Just like kind of <laughs> visually. It's like the same perspective. It's just missing that weird pixel graphics filter. Right. But like it looks Which is beautiful. It looks very hike. familiar. Yeah. yeah. But I like the idea of just existing in that very familiar setting. Uh, and just having a list of tasks to do. Because you kind of had that in a short hike, but not exactly. But the fact that you're there with a very uh, explicit goal, like go around and just fix up the park, yeah, uh, is, is very interesting to me in a, a different way than uh, how a short hike was interesting. Yeah. A short hike was very much sort of about the journey it was about the hike right it was really about sort of getting right. to the top of the mountain and you kind of overcoming the obstacles in your way along the 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 path um uh, it was pretty brief in that regard and that it, you know it was a pretty you know designed to be a fairly frictionless experience um yeah uh, a, a short hike is kind of full of friction uh, i'm sorry no, no let me try that again haven park is full of friction um in the form of kind of all of these checklists and objectives and stuff like that it sort of drops on you and i think that's where kind of the animal crossing part of it comes in is that if you're the type of animal crossing player who likes okay i get up in the morning and i greet my villagers and i check my mail uh and then i see what's new in the shops and like again there's a very sort of uh, uh, I don't know, discipline checklist of, to things to accomplish in a day in Animal Crossing, if you choose to consume it that way. Um, Haven Park fully embraces that. <laughs> so much so that in the in the pause menu, there is a checklist of things to do <laughs> throughout the course of your experience. Hmm. Again, you don't have to do any of them if you don't want to. You can continue to just walk, you know, waddle around the park and find cool new stuff. Um, but uh, if you choose to investigate the mysterious tower or the hidden cave and stuff like that, those, those are the kind of fun sense of discovery things that kind of come kind of uh, as you play more and more of it yeah yeah is this on like a day night cycle or anything uh it does have a day night cycle not in the sense that animal crossing does it's not sort of one day in the real world was one day in the game yeah so uh, but there is a the night game. and day in the game um uh, uh, it just again visually it's very striking in the beginning where at night because you're in a park with, <laughs> with no cities and stuff nearby it's like pitch black at night uh -huh. um your little bird carries around a little torch uh, and that you can sort of see a very small perimeter around you, but you're better off kind of early in the game, not working through the nights, finding hopefully you've built a tent at that point that you can go sleep. <laughs> and um, uh, later on in the game, as you've repaired tiki torches and have uh, repaired um, street lights uh, and brought a little more life back to the island, uh, again, firework shows and things like that, um, all of those things light up the night. So you can get around a little better at night. You can sort of socialize a bit more at night. You can go check in on some of your campers and stuff like that if you want to um it just makes sort of the nighttime a little more um a little more easy to navigate yeah. uh, and it's fun at night too because the one mushrooms are one of the consumables in the game one of the things that you can collect and use for crafting um and the mushrooms are blue and they're pretty easy to miss during the day but at night they glow in the dark so you kind of want a little bit of darkness so you can kind of find the mushrooms <laughs> So you can kind of go mushroom foraging at night. Um, so again, it's a little bit of a push pull in making sure that you don't bring too much light back to the island, bring too much, um, you know, industry back to the island. You still want to be able to kind of forage effectively. Well, can um, you just build lamps wherever you want? Um, street lamps and stuff like that are have sort of you'll you'll encounter them kind of broken, um, but you can build um, uh, cabanas, you can build uh, um, little decorative features and stuff like that, all which have some ambient light connected to them. Fires, obviously, every campsite needs a fire that has light, so you again yeah. can choose some of those things that you want to uh, uh, apply and where you want to apply them. Never so much that it's sort of like you know New York City; it's kind of hard to tell where day or night <laughs> it's, is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not Times Square by any means, but yeah, um, it's just kind but of. You, you could like overdo it potentially if you over decorated yeah if you had enough yeah. resources and just flooded everything with light yeah <laughs> i mean you know depends what you want out of your campsite but <laughs> to each his own <laughs> I um I was looking for a place to sleep during one of the overnight cycles because uh, it lets you sort of fast forward to the next day if you do that. Uh, otherwise, you just play through the night. Um, and uh, uh, all of my little campsites, all of my cabins and teepees and stuff like that had people sleeping in them. So there were no empty beds. And I'm like, well, cool. I have enough campers that this is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm tweaking the housing market in Haven Park a little bit. <laughs> that, there's no empty beds. Well, that's interesting. Um, yeah. In a weird way, this this makes me think of like Death Stranding, 
or even <laughs> like Valheim, just to sort of two totally random games out there. Because you you get into those games and you're just like, oh man, there's nothing here. But uh, like in in Death Stranding, especially, you're kind of tasked with like, hey, all these roads got ruined. Maybe you can do something about it. And in Valheim, I just think of, you know, it's complete wilderness at the start of that game. But after hours and hours of playing it, you like put in some like pathways and bridges and torches places. So it does feel like, oh yeah, we're just getting, you know, the infrastructure back into a place <laughs> where it's a little more habitable. <laughs> um, and that's like that's really satisfying to me, just coming back to a place and being like, oh yeah, we really fixed it up. This is really like livable now. Yeah. Yeah, it's not crafting on the on the scale of something like Valheim. I don't think mm-hmm. it's it's yeah. n- nothing. Th- you're not doing that much heavy lifting. Uh, but uh, um, the impact you have, particularly, I've, I've played it for four or five hours now at this point. Um, the impact your work has on the island is pretty substantial. Um, your campers will say, "Oh, this place used to be a mess. It's so beautiful." <laughs> And I'm like, hey, my grandma used to take care of this place. <laughs> um, Be careful who you're talking to. Easy, buddy. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it's definitely used to. It's nice to sort of see the oh, like an Animal Crossing island that you sort of take from from <laughs> in the new one. Anyways, you take from kind of rough, rugged wilderness to mm-hmm. uh, whatever version of a metropolis you've you've uh, managed to accomplish in your time with the game. Um, uh, Haven Park doesn't ever quite go that far. It's not, you would never sort of mistake it for. Uh, uh, an industrialized <laughs> Animal Crossing island, but uh, again, it's nice to sort of wander campsite to campsite, and people are kind of enjoying themselves and getting a hot dog at the food truck and stuff like that. It's just a, uh, you know, interesting uh, meter for measuring your progress. Mm. So I uh, uh, I like this. If it's not sort of uh, apparent to anybody listening to this by the enthusiasm uh, which I'm describing it, um, I've had a hell of a time with it. It's it's been uh, quite delightful. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it fits just nicely into that kind of bucket of just wholesome and enjoyable and kind of mechanically pretty easy to digest, but has enough sort of challenge and mystery at the heart of it that uh, I, I keep wanting to kind of go back to it and explore a little further and build a little more and and you know chat up my new campers and stuff like that a bit. It's just uh, uh yeah, it's a nice pleasant slow burn. Yeah, no, it sounds very relaxing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't like that word, but <laughs> you don't like relaxing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I reject that as a, a video game describer. But uh, what? Oh. Why? Well, because you don't play video games to relax, or you don't like it when a video game wants you to relax? I think I think it is often used uh, dismissively. Oh. I think sort of describing a video game as relaxing is a way that sort of you know hardcore gamers like poo poo. Animal Crossing type experiences. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever heard that. I mean, used in that way. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe that's just my my. I don't know my own baggage I bring to that. But <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It was like the well, concept of a walking I, simulator. Yeah, no, I know that's, that's that's what I hear people going towards. Like, oh, this looks like a walking simulator to me. Right. Right. Um, I like some of those games. I don't like all those games, but I don't like every sort of like cozy, wholesome game either. So, you know, that's why there's six billion different games for you to consume. But oh, right, uh, right, right, yeah. I don't uh, know what my point is. I was gonna say I'm, I will always be disappointed that one of the first two weeks of Animal Crossing: New Horizons, where it was just so weird and it, it was like a survival game almost. <laughs> Uh, and then like after a month it just turned into Animal Crossing again but I was like yes. oh man they had something so strange going on with the very like f- the first 1% of this game and then it went away and where did it go but it like kind of in line with just you know rebuilding this camp up from uh, from the ground up <laughs> yeah yeah the first couple of weeks of Animal Crossing New Horizons specifically particularly those for those of us who had played previous animal crossing games were like this is all different everything doesn't nothing works the way that i think it should um and yeah that quickly goes away and i think some people rush that i think some people like you know fast forward essentially or time travel oh, yeah, to the point time of travel through it right yeah but, but um, like what if the game had just turned into valheim that was they were so <laughs> close they could have done it uh yeah 
I don't know. There's something to be said for uh, um, uh, an Animal Crossing game that has kind of a, a, a trapped on a, a, a desert island kind of uh, scenario to it. I think that could be very fun. Um, and New Horizons has that briefly at the beginning, has just a glimmer of it yeah. um, before it, yeah, more or less just turns into your standard Animal Crossing experience. Yeah. Mm. Which clearly I find compelling, but I can yeah, see Yeah, I mean, I understand yeah. that's what people want from Animal Crossing. There right. probably would have been riots if uh, it had been a survival <laughs> game. But what if they had, I don't know, been able to blend the two somehow? Yeah. Or at least sort of like, I don't know, make you wait for it a little bit longer. Make you work for it a little harder. I'm, I'm not sure what sort of the, the right push-pull in that early sort of days of Animal Crossing New Horizons would have been. But yeah. Um, yeah, I just say uh, I, I miss a little bit of that weirdness. Well, anyway, I mean, this game sounds exciting. I, I like the idea of, you know, having a, like, home improvement projects to do. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Haven Park. Uh, I would recommend it. I'm still having a really good time with it. I think I have uh, uh, probably another 25, 30% of the island to explore and chart and, and repair and fix up and stuff like that. So uh, I'm still uh, chipping away at it. It's definitely a, a much more substantial experience than a short hike. Um, I love the brevity of that game. I think it's perfect for what it is. Um, mm-hmm. But you can kind of get through the whole thing in about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, uh, I'm definitely put much more time into Haven Park and there's still quite a bit more to do. So it's uh, a, a fairly uh, a beefier kind of experience. Yeah. It's weird because, I mean, you did have some sort of side tasks to do in um, in a short hike, mm-hmm. but that really wasn't what I was interested in in that game. I was just kind of there to, you know, chill out for a few hours. But for some reason in this, I'm so, oh, you know, a bunch of tiki torches I need to set up. I'll go take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Let's do it. Uh, it's good. It's a good time. Hmm. What is this? Is you're playing this on Switch? I'm on Switch. Yeah, I know it's on um, uh, Steam as well. Uh, I'm not sure where else it has uh, popped up at this point, but uh, uh, Park. Let's find out. Um, Apple Arcade, Nintendo Switch, and Microsoft Windows. Those are your two options. Wow. Okay. Uh, so it clearly has not made its way to uh, Xbox or playstation yet yeah it's interesting how many games are showing up on the switch and like steam and that's it (laughs) yeah i am well yeah i mean switch sells games man yeah i mean it's funny how it worked out uh but cool i'll put on my list yeah cool all right well uh, i suppose we wrap this thing up huh i think that's it unless any more golf games came out in the last hour (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to have to start a separate podcast. <laughs> um, if you want to, if you need any more video game hangover in your brain, like I've not done this closing before, you should follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash VG hangover. And you can always get show notes and links and tell us what you thought about the episode at VG hangover.com. Uh, we would love for you to join us on Discord, hang out with us, and talk about video games and other things. You can get a link to that at VG hangover.com as well. Uh, Subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and anywhere else you can get a podcast and tell your friends about the show. Um, I want to talk about YouTube a little bit, TJ. You've been uh, super diligent about making sure that on Fridays the new episodes hit YouTube. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you subscribe to the show on, like, in podcast format, in audio format, you get it Thursday morning. But over the last year or so, we've been converting all our episodes to fit on YouTube and releasing those on Friday. So if for some reason you're just like away from your typical podcast player or or if you're just like watching stuff on YouTube, you can do that uh <laughs> every Friday morning. Nice. There's not really a video to go along with it. We're not on there like talking at the screen, but uh, if you just want to put something on to listen to, uh it's on there and we have uh, a bunch of the back catalog on there as well. Yeah. It's good I find that I put them on uh, sometimes if I'm like putzing around the house or doing dishes or whatever, I can put it on the smart TV in my living room and come out of my com- TV speakers and it sounds awesome. And yeah. it has the, ni- the nice big drunken invader on the TV screen. Like <laughs> yeah. It. That's one thing that's kind of nice. It's like, I feel like it's a lot easier to get YouTube on uh, a variety of different platforms uh, as opposed to like finding a podcast on there. So right. it's a yeah. little more accessible. Plus, you can leave us a comment about. I don't know what people talk about on YouTube. We should probably just disable comments. <laughs> but anyway, 
uh, wherever you listen to uh, to the show, it's great. If you tell your friends about it, uh, tell them that there's a, a show you like listening to. Helps us grow the listenership. Yeah. All right. I think that's enough of that. Uh, we want to give special thanks to Hal Binderman this week for our intro and outro music. It would be awesome if you could head on over to heavyviper.bandcamp.com. Listen to some more of his stuff. Maybe buy an album or two. Do it. All right. We'll be back next week. Until then, this is Randy Dickinson. This is DJ Ross. Thanks so much for listening to Video Game Hangover. We'll talk to you next week. Goodbye. Good night. See ya. See ya.